Hey everybody, back with another video. We are in the garage and this is a Data East company or Deco um, lock-in chase. And I thought this would be interesting. I've had this cabinet for a while, but I've been uh, pulling games out of storage, trying to get my games out of storage so I can stop paying extra money. And this one I've been wanting to do just get it ready. I'm not going to do a restore. I just need to fix it and clean it up and everything. Um, but I've been waiting to do this for several years. Um, and I thought it would be an interesting kind of video to show. I don't know what this is up here. If you guys see that. I don't think that's original. I'm probably going to take that off. But it is the cabinet's in pretty good shape. It's Japanese plywood. Uh, like some of the Nintendo plywood, so it's a little bit thinner than normal plywood. And it's in pretty decent shape. It actually has a little bit of scuffs here and there. Um, I've already cleaned the bottom of it. I need to fix a couple of the um, leg levelers and stuff. Um, but everything else looks pretty good. It has wheels. The bottom looks pretty good. I'll, I'll show it when I actually put the leg levelers back on. Let's see, I have the keys for it. I'll sh show that in a second. I just wanted to kind of document some of it. So there's a, some of the um, vinyl siding is off a little bit. You can actually see the brown plywood underneath of it. But I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone because I'm not gonna, I just want to get it working and cleaned up and in the basement as fast as possible. <clears throat> I have all types of other projects like this red tent with a busted monitor. <laughs> Want, there's a neck tube right there that's busted if you guys can see that not by me I didn't do that but I picked it up there's one red tent there's a make tracks that I need to work on um, that I'm not gonna do a restore on I'm just gonna fix it and bring it down that is a crazy climber I got my tube in over there this is a Cinestar right there that I'm working on and then a Nintendo punch out that I don't know what I'm doing with right now. So I just pulled a bunch of stuff from storage um, and I have another red tent project over there too if you can barely see it but anyway um, I just I wanted to kind of video document this so sorry I know walking around and stuff but it's a super cool kind of rare um, at least in the US you don't see a lot of these decos very interesting kind of cloth background kind of thing going on right there. This laminate right here is Boeing, as you can see. The plexi overlay is kind of maybe from sitting in storage. That might not have, but I'll take that off and see if we can flatten that out. So, all right, that's good right, enough. Looking now. inside the coin door, I brought my keys. So it is dirty in there. Um, you see some type of power switch, an erase switch, I don't know what that is, a volume switch, if you can see that right there. Again, just video documenting here. It says 15,226 plays on one coin meter and then 8,653 on the other. A coin box here besides some spider webs. Um, December 4th, 15,140 and 8627. So I don't know, December 4th of what? Oh, it says 1990. That's kind of interesting. This card is showing from November of 1990. So that must be December of 1990. So this thing was still in use in 1990. That's crazy. You can see there. Let's see if I get some light in here. All right, as you can see there, that is the cassette tape player. And this does use cassette tapes. Now, I'm sure that's not working. And I actually have a dark soft um, multi kit for this thing that I've never used or tried to use and I don't know I think I have powered this on one time it's got a like a three board stack and then something up top there I don't know what that is 
So that's the front okay, side. Lower the whole door like this, this front door part. You can bring it, well, one hand here. And then that gives you a better view of what's going on. A couple of transformers back there on the left. Control panel wiring. Interesting. And I don't know what's in there, so we need to clean all that out. I right, took off the back door. And there's a couple speakers up there. Ah, that's that cloth covering is actually to that speaker. It's like a speaker grill there. Let's see, do you actually do you need that light? Plenty of light there. I don't know what kind of monitor that is. It's definitely a Japanese monitor. Interesting. Looks like a power supply here, a couple of transformers, a fan right there with some bugs and crap all over it interesting so first step is to remove everything including the monitor and kind of clean it up and get all these dead bugs out of there make sure there's nothing else crawling around and then probably test power and start to slowly put things back in a lot of little weird jumpers on there There we go. You can see the cards. All right, that's teardown time. All right, I got most everything out. I got the marquee out. Looks like just a regular 100 volt Nintendo style fluorescent fixture there. And then to get this out, there was a couple pieces. I'll show you when it goes back in, but it's basically the monitor. And there's a wood frame with a monitor surround, then the bezel. So it's kind of a pain. But one nice thing is this whole thing with four bolts. There's a one here, one over here, and two in the back. This whole plywood board for the power board set and everything just comes out. Um, so I'm going to pull that out. I can't do it on camera, but I just thought that was super interesting. Wanted to film that. Just four bolts, screw in, and this whole thing comes out board and all and I'll show that in a all second. I right, got everything out and it looks pl plenty again can't, can't talk um, looks plenty dirty obviously um, you can see in there and what we got back here now I don't know there could be I see some mouse stuff like some little seeds and stuff some quarters 1984 1987 um, but I'm gonna put some gloves on and a mask because I saw somebody get very sick, not from cleaning arcade games, but if there's mouse poop and stuff like that, you probably shouldn't be breathing in if it's stirring up and stuff like that. So I would recommend wearing a mask when you clean up like mouse shit or rat poop or something. All right, so I have this in the basement, this um, Deco card rack system or cassette cassette system. So you can see there, got our power switch. The race switch maybe is we race high scores. We've got a volume pot. This uh, cassette player here actually has, um, it was left open, I guess, which isn't ideal. And I have not looked at how to eject that thing. I don't know how you get that. So oh, maybe this. But oh, there you go. Well, that's not too bad. Little, 
little tiny tape. Actually, I have the power plugged in, so I got to be somewhat careful. I don't know how the heck you get... Damn, that's a pain in the butt to get out. Let's see. And not get that tape out. There we go. Um, is it busted? No, I guess it's just at the beginning. It says Data East Lock and Chase DT one 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 zero. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I'm sure the heads need to be cleaned and stuff like that. I don't even know if I should actually Let's see if I can push that back further. No, that's as far as it goes. Alright, I finally got it out, but it, the reason it won't go back far enough for me to get my fingers in there is these little screws right there that you see right there and there. It kind of stops stops it from sliding out of the track which is fine but it's just a pain in the butt to get the, to get the tape out so I'm going to probably just leave that like it is for now um, anyway fuse 117 volts is what it's set for I don't know exactly how to change that if that's a switch or not I don't I have no idea if that's just how it's wired up and the monitor is 110 volts so we're going to measure 110 volts there this is the degauss wire right there it's also 100 volts did i say 110 i meant 100. Um, it puts out 12 volts this switching power supply has 12 volts negative five two plus fives this is the connector i unplugged it so i could test it I think I did power this on and I got a blue screen, but I'm not sure. Um, but we see the five volts there as well. So it is still filthy. Tons of little jumper wires and crazy stuff, but they all look intact. I mean, look at this, like things just hanging off of the, the legs and stuff. Kind of crazy. And this is a dongle. I don't know if I mentioned that. I just, I've been doing some reading. So this security mechanism the tape goes with this lock and chase dongle right here and then you would have different dongles with different tapes um, and the fan and stuff like that so all right let me the only thing i'm going to do is kind of a pain in the butt to try to hook this up to a monitor other than the monitor it came with because it's got a weird weird cable for video doesn't make it easy if I show you here this is the video connector it goes right there and like it's it's almost like a Nintendo cable but I don't know if it's the same pinout because it's sync then it skips a pin and then uh, let's see there ground red green blue I don't know, I might have to check my Nintendo to see if it's the same. If it is, then I can grab a Nintendo cable. Because the other side of it is this little weird plug here, so I'd have to rig something up. But let me come back and test 5 volts. Oh, the other thing interesting about this power supply is, first off, you very rarely see a 12 volt adjust. But if you look at this pin here, they are looping field ground to logic ground. Um, so a lot of times you get interference and stuff because the monitor will be tied to field ground and logic ground and then there's some weird loop anyway. A lot of times on switching power supplies you end up um, looping your field ground to comp your logic ground. Some people say you shouldn't do it, but ultimately in the monitor, common it, logic ground is tied to field ground uh, most likely. So then there's... A difference, a difference, or a potential, or something. I don't know. Whatever. All right, let me power this thing up. Well, the fan's working. It took a while to power up, but let's see here. 
I have 12 volts. And let's see, where's my negative 5? Negative 5. And if I can get in here, 5 volts. So that's working pretty good. So the power supply is actually working. I might need to recap it um, as preventative maintenance. Let's check. Let me pause and check the 100 volts coming out of here. All right, have that, and it is 111 volts, so not quite 100. And I was checking this one right here, and I'm getting 10 volts, which is the degauss. That should be 100 volts. I don't know what, I'm gonna have to look into that. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, let's see, so 100, 110 volts isn't too high for the monitor, but it should be lower, and that's probably, I might need to look at the strapping of this thing to see if I can strap it higher, because I probably have, coming from my power in, is, you know, more than 100 volts, obviously, so. All right, I got stuff jerry-rigged here to get video out. We checked the power, so we think we're okay anyway. We didn't test it under load, so I got that. I got my extension cable going all the way over to my monitor. So let's go ahead and flip the power switch, I guess. Oh, we got something. Cassette Error 59, 50, yeah, 59, Deco Cassette System, wait until the counter below reads zero, then game start. Cassette Error 59, I think, or that could be 58. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely 59, adjusting the brightness there. Cool, the thing boots, I guess that's pretty good. 59 let's read what that is all right it says um, hopefully you can see that air 59 cassette air guide 59 check six seven and eight check tape deck connector check the key module connector and check the tape to ensure side a is facing up all right so I did that I put, went ahead and put the tape in. I have no idea if it's gonna work. I didn't clean the heads or anything like that. So we're just throwing caution to the wind here. And I reseated this connector and I reseated that connector. Let's go ahead and power it on. And we don't have an air yet. So now we got 52. Cassette error 52. All right, it says uh, 52 is 8, 9, and 4. 8, 9, and 4. And let's see, 8 is uh, check the tape to ensure A is facing up. I did that. Check the tape to ensure that the tape is on the spool opposite the capital A. I did that. It actually is set up exactly how it's supposed to be. And then four, change the cassette deck. So I went and looked. I'll power it up right, one more we're time. I'm power it up. I know it's kind of difficult to see. I don't know if you can see it, but let's see here. You can hear it, but nothing is spinning. The motor is not spinning at all. So even if that tape works, the cassette deck is jacked up. We might need to find some, disassemble it, and see what's going on. All right, it's just, um, I went ahead and took off the cover and removed, it's pretty easy, removed this um, chassis, I guess, or metal frame, and then four screws, and this whole thing comes out, and then there's an edge connector that this connects to, this cable, like that. And if I look at it, I'm just, I don't know if you can see it. 
Let's see here. Turn some light on. You can see the the rubber band or whatever that needs to go from this motor to that right there is bad. So I at least need to replace that just to see if it would work. It looks like it's melted, so I'm gonna have to take this apart and see if there's um, some type of belt that I can get. I think you can get a bunch of different little belts on Amazon or something. Little drive belts or something. Otherwise, I heard the motor running, so I think the motor runs. Bunch of transistors and stuff like that, so. I'm gonna do that, see if we can get it running with the normal tape, but I also have the dark soft thing, so. Okay, so while we're waiting um, for some parts to arrive from Amazon, figured I would use the dark soft multi kit and see if we got anywhere with that. Now this is one of the earlier ones, it, and I did spend some time, you know, reading what the heck is going on because they've updated the software. I think it's arcade-projects.com, and you can see there's a couple capacitors that are added onto the bottom. It says OK, and I'm busy erasing the 27080 or 27C800. Which I think is a one megabyte um, ROM and I'm erasing that and let's see what else and I'm burning some other stuff so downloading some code but we have to actually install two chips one is the BIOS chip and one is this dongle here that replaces the dongle the security dongle so basically to remove this thing and I already started, you basically, you know, un loosen this up, slide these little latches to the side on both sides. And then I had to detach this, detach this cable that goes right there. And then I'm just re removing this bottom board, if I can get it all the way out here. And you can see this is the DSP, well, I'll flip it around, it's kind of dirty. DSP3. So I have what they call the FAT, I guess, board stack. It's three board stacks. There's actually four slots um, in the in the frame, but um, this is the three, and I don't even know it says CPU3. I don't know anything about these board sets, but the two chips that we want to replace are this PB0, which is at M looks like it's M7, M8 and N I guess or is that L probably L um, 8 as well so PB0 I mean P0 B2 and I guess this is something C whatever I don't know but these are the two that we want to replace so and are they? I think they are 2716s. They have a little bit of electrical tape on it. These are what, 2316s maybe? Alright, I'm going to pull them off off camera and put my replacements in. Now the ROM that I had to burn for the BIOS from Darksoft was um, a 2732 so I just basically uh, let's see if I can show that I ah, whatever I burned it I just said um, two 2716s I burned the first one zero hex to 7ff and the next one I used um, eight 800 hex to whatever so all right I'll okay, be right so back. I put in my uh, zero to 7ff range here and my 800 to what is it, 10,000, I guess? No, 800 to 1,000. 1,000 hex um, over here. Is that right? 4K, whatever. <laughs> you get the idea. Alright, so.
first time of you trying to put these boards in here. back up all right I think and then this right here goes right there I don't know what that connector is for yet I think we're good. There's my dongle. My dongle goes right there. But we're gonna use the dark soft, so as soon as I get the the big chip programmed, we'll plug in our dongle just like this. rest right there so we'll be back in a second all right I have uh, my new ROM burn 42 pin 27 C 800 one megabyte I have my control panel hooked up right there and let's go ahead and cross our fingers where's my power switch at it's right here and we got some some garbage and it's working. Holy shit. <laughs> nice. Multi-deco angler. I have no idea if my board set works. My, my joystick works. Um, well, let's see here. It needs some, my joystick needs some work. What am I trying to do here? Boulder dash, bump and jump. Okay, let's do bump and jump. Yeah, my joystick needs some work. Oh my gosh. There we go. And player one. There we go. Loading. Deco cassette system. Wait for the timer. And we're up and running. Fantastic. Don't know if the audio is working. Um, obviously, I have to put this back in the cabinet and everything. But it looks like the board set's perfectly working. The only thing that's wrong with this is the tape deck. Just looking to see what's going on. No graphic glitches or anything. I'm almost scared to clean the board set. Yeah, I don't notice anything wrong. Awesome. Alright, so we got some cleaning to do. We know our, you know, it looks like our Deco uh, multi-kit from Darksoft is working. Got to do some control panel work there. Um, clean, finish cleaning up the cab and all that stuff. So I think that's it. going to be it for this video. Um, I'll come back and work on the cassette tape to see if we can get that working. I'm going to remove all these boards. We know they all work, so we're starting from a good spot. I'm going to remove everything here in the next video and then uh, clean it. But we'll be back. So, till next time, guys. Quick, uh, quick little new pickup. Not new pickup. I've had it for a while, actually since 2017 or tw yeah, 2017. It's 2021. So yeah, at least four years um, in the making of getting this in the basement. And Dark Soft, awesome. I can't wait to actually get this up and running.